Hi again, this is John Muller with the JP Muller Group, and in today's video we're going to talk about the calendaring functionality. So first we're going to talk about um, the working days. So you'll note that in the Gantt chart here, let me zoom out a little bit, that Saturdays and Sundays are grayed out, as well as holidays. So on 219 we have a uh, President's Day holiday here in the U.S., and that's grayed out as well. Those are non-working days. Through um, a lot of feedback, internationally especially, there are a lot of countries or religions or work groups that um, work actually on Fridays, and or excuse me, have off on Fridays and work on Sundays, because Friday is a holy day in a, in a number of religions. So we added the functionality to adjust which days are working days. And you do that by going on the Preferences tab. And in the Preferences tab, we could manipulate a lot of um, settings on the template, but we're going to talk about this grid down below, which is our workday grid. And we have every day of the week, and we indicate whether the day is a workday or not. So right now, Monday through Friday is a workday. Saturday, Sunday is not. So let's flip Friday to not be a workday, and we'll make Sunday a workday. Let's go look what it did to our Gantt chart. Notice what it does, is it grays out Friday and Saturday, and it leaves Sunday now as a work day. But what it also did was adjusted the dates accordingly, especially the end dates, where it determines um, what um, the end date should be based on which days are working dates and which aren't. Okay, so that's the uh, changing work days. Let's talk about managing the holiday calendar. So we talked about 219 being a holiday. Let's say we go, how does it do that? It's on this other tab called holiday calendar. So if we look, President's Day is a holiday. Let's say it wasn't, and we want to remove that. We got to work in our company. We go there and uh, we do, just delete that line. And if we go back to our Gantt chart here, and you'll notice that now 219 is no longer a holiday. Similarly, it adjusts our project plan to allow work to happen on that day. Notice we have work happening on that day now. See these two will be split once I put 219 back. So let's go back to my holiday calendar for a second. And let's undo this so we show President's Day. And if we go back to our project plan, notice it now splits that one task to start before the holiday and end afterwards, since it was a two-day task. Let's say I want to add a new holiday. Let's say I'm going to make 218 a holiday. Now it's birthday. It's not, but anyhow, I'll put that anyway. This description doesn't do anything other than indicate to you what the you, you what this holiday is for. It doesn't show up in the project plan at all. So I go in here and now notice 218 is grayed out and these two days worth of work actually fall after the weekend and the holiday. All right so now let's go back and kind of remove this and kind of reset things for a second and um, Let's talk about another setting here. You could adjust the uh, number of work days per week. It's automatically calculated to be five. So if in our uh, duration column we put like one week, it translates that into five days worth of work. So for example, we have this task here that is one week. It starts on the 10th and ends on the 15th. Okay, five days worth of work. Now, 210 to 215 sounds like more. That's because 210 is a work day, or excuse me, a weekend, so it doesn't count. So these are the five, five green days worth of work. Let's go to preferences for a second, and we'll change Friday, let's say, or excuse me, we'll put Sunday as non-working again. Okay, when I do that, only four days are work days. It calculates that automatically up here. So we change that from five 
to 4. Let's go back to our project plan and you'll notice that anything that had a duration of a week like this should show up with four green blocks because we're looking at days. So we scroll over and notice it's four green blocks for that task or four days worth of work. Let's go and we'll uh, change this back. We'll make Friday a work day again. And we'll go to our project plan and notice it made that task now five days worth of work. So we could adjust that. Last thing I want to show you is work days per month. So this one's interesting. In most project um, planning software at enterprise level, like a Microsoft project, it considers a month to be 20 days worth of work or four weeks times five days. You can override that here. We start with 20. Uh, you can make it whatever you want, but we stuck with the standard and we made it configurable for you. So if you look, we have here a task that takes a whole month. It starts on the 23rd, let me zoom in for a second, of February and ends on March 22nd, which is a month including non-working days or excluding non-working days. So let's go and make this 30. When I jump back to my plan, it's now going to push this task out to ending on 4-5 because I added basically 50% more time by making one month equal to 30 work days. All right, so let me go set this back so it's how I like it and go back to my plan and zoom out a little bit. So that's how uh, we manipulate some of the calendaring functionality. I hope you enjoyed this video and tune in for more functionality in future videos. Thanks for joining.